welcome friends to a fresh episode and in this today's episode it's a special one we will be discussing about the market and how the market has been behaving for last couple of years and what inference we can take from the data we recently received treb mls sales data for the month of october 2023 and based on that currently the market is more tilted towards buyer buyer and investors are calling the shots and negotiation they are having a definite upper hand in the negotiations and lot of inventory lot of opportunities for people who have uh, ability to capitalize on this depressed market which is more tilted towards buyers and we will see from the data why it is so so let's get started here you can see the average price trend in the greater toronto area for last more than 2 years and you can see that initially feb 2022 is the time i have tried to maintain this perspective that we can see from the peak of the market how the data has behaved so in bank of canada they had successive interest rate changes as all of us are aware from march 3rd 2022 it started and they had eight successive interest rate changes and hikes till january of 25th 2023 so this time frame from the second green bar here to january of 2023 we had eight successive raises in interest rates in the initial 4 to 5 months the market dramatically reacted to that and as you can see in july of 2022 it was an absolute depressed point and then it continued like that for almost 7 months on january of 25th 23 bank of canada announced that they are going to put a slight hold on the raises in interest rates and immediately market sharply reacted and lot of buying activity started as you could see there are successive uh, price month on month price increases which were observed uh, in the gta and in fact across gta also outside gta also and then uh, bank of canada announced another uh, raise in the interest rate which was on 6th of june 2023 and on this that was a small one for 25 basis points and they further did another revision for 25 basis points of increase and it was on july 12th 2023 since july there has been no increases in the two committee meetings which have happened market we saw in september it took a in the gta it took a 3.4% of month on month increase and then in october this past month we observed 0.58% of month on month increase in the market so market as we speak it is almost at par with what it was in late june 2022 and july of 2022 buyer is in the driving seat and lot of negotiations happen lot of inventory to choose from and it completely depends on disposition of a buyer or a investor whether they are buying it for yourself or they are trying to create a investment asset what is your investment exposure what is your budget most importantly but certainly based on the data what i can see here it's a pretty credible time to get into the market if your exposure or the duration of your investment is long it's a pretty full proof approach where you can come into the market at the depressed prices capitalize on this market and then continue with your investment for 8 10 15 years and certainly it will benefit in the long run no doubt about that irrespective of the cyclical nature of real estate market let us now move on to the freehold properties and see what we have um, what data is saying so these are all of the municipalities major municipalities in the greater toronto area and 
this is the average median price i should say the median price median sold price for all of the freehold properties in these different municipalities so this uh, graph really speaking shows us the affordability aspect of all of these areas and as you could see that oshawa toronto and mind you guys to toronto in itself is separated into three different zones west central toronto and east so when you see 881 833 here it's a average across all of those three regions and across the property types and the ages of those property types in the freehold segment for toronto there's the reason you see it's on the left side of this graph however when you in isolation when you see toronto central you will see toronto central is way uh, on the right side so it's way uh, higher it's less affordable toronto east is the cheapest and most economic part of toronto and then followed by toronto west so toronto central is so toronto central is the most priciest location in toronto followed by toronto west followed by toronto east and in this data what we see is the amalgamation of the average of all three of those locations and then uh, another take away which you can see from this uh, graph is that durham is the most affordable region uh, when we talk about greater toronto area which is nothing but five different regions peel halton toronto york and durham you will also see immediately that on the right side of the graph we have mostly york warm richmond hill markham new market so york is most uh, priciest location in, uh, in in the greater toronto area oakville from halton region also is uh, one of the sought after locations uh, in uh, gta and another take away which we can see from the graph here is that a consumer who is willing to pay a certain amount in oshawa for the similar property similar spec property in oakville the consumer is almost giving twice of that amount to purchase uh, in uh, a municipality which is oakville so that tells us the power of location in real estate so it's in the same market in the same depressed market this data is as of uh, october 2023 absolutely recent but in this market itself you can see the huge variance on the left side of the graph and on the right side of the graph so this tells us why in real estate location takes the cake location is the most important factor by far which determines when i am investing x dollars today how much my investment will go in next 5 years or 10 years completely and totally the most important aspect is location certainly there are other aspects too like property age property type the style of the property the neighborhood the overall curb inside and out of the property however the most important from all of these factors is location so the most weight is by the location which is followed by all other factors and that we can see immediately from this data that how oshawa ajax brampton milton are conservative and markham richmond hill oakville caledon are on the right side of the spectrum further if we do uh, micro analysis these are these municipalities in the gta and how month on month uh, they behaved as far as october 23 is concerned so you could see that oshawa whitby burlington mississauga new market and markham saw a raise a rise month on month over month in this past month burlington saw a huge uh, variance of 8% plus in this past month moving on to condo here are some of the municipalities in the gta where there is a pretty decent composition of high rise condos which we can see in the area and you could see here that central toronto so toronto toronto central will have both downtown toronto as well as north york um, area 
and certainly Toronto Central and Markham and Oakville are the most sought after locations when it comes to in terms of buying a high rise condo dwelling one also is uh, pretty close so really speaking york municipalities in york and central wing of toronto is where uh, people um, are willing to pay that extra dollar for buying a high rise condo mississauga comes uh, on the uh, middle left and so mississauga is a very fine balance between keeping the budget in control at the same time getting into a location which is commuter friendly and logistically ease of commute is there to downtown toronto and all amenities around the area that's what we can take as a takeaway we can get from the median prices of high rise condos and uh, friends this is data as of uh, october 2023 so absolutely uh, fresh and latest data on how all of these cities stack in comparison to each other in greater toronto area further if we go down here we can see all of the municipalities in the gta and how month on month they behaved in terms of uh, average prices and we can see that central toronto and oakville these are the two municipalities where we saw some gains otherwise for the most part the market is saturated in condos also so it's a perfect time to get into condo ownership also because the prices are very saturated so now from all of this data what we can get is that if you can hold on your selling you should hold one should hold it's not really a good time for sellers because the market is very depressed and prices are very saturated if you can hold for at least 2 to 2 and a half years in your plans or in your aspirations to do the next step you should hold it's not a really good market to get exit or get out of the market if you are trying to do a move up it's a very good market because you will sell in depressed prices however when you move up you will also buy in depressed prices and since you are moving up you are buying a better asset your benefit will be more when you do a move up so this market is not a market for move down when you are trying to downsize because you are selling a better asset at a depressed price and you are buying a inferior asset or a smaller asset at a reduced price so it's not a good proposition however when you do a move up this works well current market so current market not so good for pure selling or for downsizing but it's a very good one for moving up and it's also a good one for pure purchase when i'm saying pure purchase you are not selling or uh, downsizing or upsizing but you are doing a purchase for first time home buyers or uh, people who are trying to invest so lot of opportunities uh, i see working on the ground with clients and with our team where uh, you can which you can get in uh, very depressed prices right now and mind you all of this what is what we are seeing in last 2 to 2 and a half years is purely a function of the interest rates and the borrowing costs so once all of these borrowing costs are checked back and brought in control the market will try to stand back on its feet and try to uh, if not run at least walk i would love to see what's your take on the current market so please fill in your comments and that will be good and then if at all any other thing which you want me to cover or any other specific areas you want me to cover i would be more than happy to discuss those uh, based on your feedback and if you need any help in real estate or any advice in real estate our team at elixir will be more than happy to assist you with the best consultancy we can which works for your goals Thanks very much for your time and I will see you soon. Take care. If you like this episode, do like and subscribe for more such content.